In the Holy Bible, brothers and sisters, in the Scriptures, the New Testament, there are three recorded accounts of when Christ raises someone from the dead. We have, we know the most renowned or popular one is the raising of Lazarus from the dead, which happened just before, um, just a week before Christ's own passion, crucifixion and resurrection. We have the 12-year-old girl, Jairus' daughter, who was also raised from the dead. And we have a young boy today that we heard in today's Gospel reading from the area of Nain, who was a widow's son, a widow's only son. And as the Scripture tells us, it was as Jesus was entering this city that just as as he was entering through the gate, he was confronted by a funeral procession. And at that funeral procession, he looked at the mother weeping for her son and had compassion on her. And at that moment, he said to the mother, do not weep. And looking at the child in his coffin, speaks to him, and tells him to arise and walk. And at that moment, the young man who was lying lifeless in his, co- his coffin sits up and begins to speak. And the people are astounded. And so, for us, this is, just, this is more than just a miracle of Christ bringing back someone from the dead. We have Christ saying to the mother, do not weep. The mother, brothers and sisters, symbolizes the church. The church who is a mother to all of us. When we are baptized in the church, we're baptized in a font. And that font symbolizes the womb. The womb which gives new life and new birth to the person who is being baptized. And so from that moment onwards, we have a biological mother and we also have a spiritual mother. And our spiritual mother is the church which cares for us and which nurtures us and which raises us up in the foundations of the Christian faith, uniting us with Christ our God and our Father in heaven. He says, do not weep. Christ also says the same thing to the parents of the young 12-year-old girl just before he raised her from the dead. Do not weep, for she is not dead, but only sleeping. And just before Christ rose Lazarus from the dead, he says to the sister Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall never die, but will live, will always have life in them, even though they will die, they will continue to live. You see, brothers and sisters, for us as Christians, death does not, ex- does not exist in the way that we understand it. When someone physically dies, we say that they reposed or they fall asleep because we understand death is a transition from one life to another, from this temporary world into eternal life. And where that eternal life will be depends entirely on us. And this is why we say that what is more concerning to us is not physical death, but spiritual death. And we are part and we rely on our spiritual mother, the church, to nurture us and continue to give us life so that we can have life eternal with our spiritual Father, our Father who is in heaven, who has promised us the kingdom of heaven. And so, having these things in mind, brothers and sisters, today we celebrate these wonderful two saints who were a married couple. Their names were Andronikos and Athanasia. And they had two children. They were a pious couple, a pious Christian couple. But 
as was common in those days, their children both got sick. One was 10 and the other one was 12 and died. Athanasia, being a mother, was full of grief. And so she went and she stayed in the church of St. Justin, the philosopher, the martyr. And there she wept for her children all night until from her grief she fell asleep and was awoken by a vision of St. Justin himself. And St. Justin says to Athanasia, the grieving mother, it is better that you do not grieve for your children who now are in a beautiful and wonderful place, but grieve for your own sins. And so, having seen this vision of St. Justin and hearing the words that, he, that he, he said to her, went to her husband, Andronikos, and told her, and told him that from now onwards, they would de devote their lives entirely to Christ. And that's what they did. They left one for a male monastery and the other one for a female monastery. And it wasn't until years later that coincidentally, or not coincidentally, but by the providence of God, that both of them were journeying to the Holy Land to venerate the places in Jerusalem, the Holy Sepulchre, and the place where cru Jesus was crucified and born. Athana Andronikos saw this person who was Athanasia, but did not recognize her because her face was so altered from her ascetical fasts and praying and weeping and asked her if he, if, um, he would journey with, her, with him. And they did. In silence, they journeyed to the holy places. And Andronikos, realizing and feeling this divine presence coming from Athanasia, asked that after they, they venerated the places that he would stay with her. And she allowed him, but she did not reveal who she was to him, even though she knew that that was her husband. And it wasn't until she passed away, she reposed in Christ, that the Holy Spirit revealed that the person that he was living with in this ascesis, an ascetic struggle, was the wife that he, they had formerly been together, but had left for the love of Christ. Both of them died as saints of the church, and we celebrate them today. A second saint is Saint Pelagia, who we celebrated yesterday the former harm, harlot and this woman who was full of sin and as we know a harlot spent so much time adorning herself adorning her physical features putting on jewelry and costly perfume and one day when the bishop of the area saint nonos saw her he turned around and he said to the other bishops this woman one day will put us all to shame because none of us look after our soul as much as this woman looks after her physical features. And because we do not care for our soul, one day this woman will precede us in the kingdom of heaven. And on the other day, as Christ, as, as St. Nonos saw her walking past the church, began to preach and to preach about the second coming of Christ and the final judgment hearing about the final judgment, the woman Belayia, the harlot Belayia, was brought to tears and went and fell at the feet of Nonos, weeping for her tears and begging him to baptize her. When he saw that her repentance was sincere, she was baptized and she left the world to become devoted to Christ in ascesis and spiritual struggle and fasting and prayer until she reposed in Christ and gave her soul to Christ becoming one of the saints of the church. These examples I bring to you brothers and sisters so that we can understand a few things. From Saint Pelagia we take how important it is not to adorn our bodies, not to adorn everything which is temporal and of this world but to always look after our soul and to remember the words of St. Justin, the martyr,
who said to Saint Athanasia, don't weep for people who are in, in paradise, we should rejoice for them. But remember to mourn and to weep for your, for your sins. And these words should echo in our hearts, brothers and sisters, and see our sins as something which separates us from what? From God. And when we're separated from God, we are separated from God's holiness, His light, and His truth. And the fact that we have saints is living proof that we are all capable of doing this. Remember the words of Christ, brothers and sisters, to the mother and to the, to the parents of the two children that he raised. Do not weep. Remember, do not weep. In other words, do not lose hope. Regardless of who we are and what we've done and how far we are or feel from God, God is always there present. And there's never a time where for us it's too late. Remember, if God is able to raise someone from the dead as he did this young man today in the Gospels, if God is able to bring a harlot to repentance and make her into a saint, holy, then imagine how much God can also do to us when we give our heart to him in humility in repentance and sincerely wanting to change our life so that we can allow Christ to enter into our hearts and to make our heart of stone into a heart of flesh to make to banish the darkness and to bring the light to fill it from despair into hope hope of eternal life forever in the presence of God's uncreated light and delight and joy. Amen.